I'm ready to just be done with all this skin, you know, it's, it's, it's never something that I had anticipated, you know, I didn't think when I lost weight that I would have all of this extra skin, I really thought, I don't know what I thought to be honest, but. <laughs> wake up during the surgery. You will not feel the surgery. And then when I am finished, say, okay, we're done. And about 10, 15 minutes later, he turns it on the dials, boom, magically you wake up. Yeah. Yeah. Everyone wakes up. Everyone. <laughs> those are usually, those are the top, yeah. top fears. You know, am I gonna wake up? Yeah. Uh, am I gonna feel it? And am I gonna be able to go to sleep? Yeah, boom, all those, boom, yeah. boom, boom. Yeah, I'm Zach, uh, I live in Hemi, California. I'm 24 years old, I'm a real estate agent. Um, and I'm also a personal trainer. Um, personal training isn't really that lucrative, so at least not yet. My highest weight was 463 pounds. Like I was always kind of uncomfortable with being overweight, you know, like I didn't like the way I looked, I didn't like the way I felt, I didn't like not being able to do certain things, but I've always been really outgoing and really social. So like that aspect of my life never really lacked. Like I was never an outsider. I never like didn't have friends. I was always pretty popular, but I wasn't confident like in my body image. And so that was never really enough for, to get me to lose weight. Like I had tried a few times here and there, and then it was kind of like, you know, I would lose a couple pounds like doing whatever fad diet or whatever this, whatever that, but it never really stuck. And it wasn't until I was 19, um, my dad, he's overweight and he's always been overweight. And he had a heart attack in 2012. And after he had his heart attack, it kind of like scared me a little bit to kind of like look into my own health. So I scheduled the doctor's appointment to just kind of get a general checkup. And I got diagnosed with hypertension at 19. And that's also when I was like 460 pounds. So then that was kind of like my moment of, oh crap. Like, if you don't do something about this, like you already have high blood pressure, you're already on blood pressure medication. Like if you don't do something about this now, you're just gonna die from this. Like, so it wasn't until it was like a life or death situation to where I was finally like, okay, no, enough screwing around. Like it's time to get serious about this. How long am I gonna be out of the gym? A good question. That was really good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So um, there's upper body and lower body. I would say um, two to three weeks. Okay. In two, at two to three weeks, you can do biceps and triceps. Oh wow. Okay. Um, uh, uh, moderate intensity. Yeah. 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 Two to three weeks, maybe you can isolate gastrox. Okay. okay, your calf muscles. Yeah, yeah. Okay, maybe at about a month, a month will get you walking, and maybe you run. Probably. No, not. I don't run. Yeah. No, I'm okay. Not a run. I'm, I yeah. mainly just gym. Yeah. I yeah. do jump rope and like, yeah. but I mainly just like powerlifting, like lifting yeah. heavy weights. So powerlifting heavy weights maybe at about six to eight weeks. Okay, yeah, that's what I was. Is, I was mentally sort of preparing saying. for eight weeks. So, yeah. yeah. Six to eight weeks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that so, makes how much do you lift? Uh, which was bench. Lift? Bench. bench? My bench is my weakest. Oh, okay. I only got a 245 bench. But what's your squat? I got a 400 pound squat <laughs> and I got a 425 deadlift. Wow, 425. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's so crazy. I'm working on it. Yeah, the goal is after I heal next year, I'm going to do training and then try and compete in my first powerlifting meet somewhere in like the next summer. Cool. Yeah, around like September, Very cool. October. Very maybe, cool. Yeah. I'm getting, yeah, the, the circumferential body lift and then as well as a chest reduction. I'm ready to just be done with all this skin, you know? And so clothes fitting better is definitely one thing that I'm super excited for, especially pants. Pants I struggle with because it's like, you kind of have this either or. It's like, you're either gonna tuck all the skin into your pants or you're gonna have it all hang out over above it. And either way, it's not that comfortable and it ends up pulling on my skin and hurting. and. So that's what I'm most excited for is just, you know, clothes fitting better and just not having to worry so much, like, 
or be self-conscious about when I'm just taking my shirt off like at the beach or at the pool. It's not that comfortable to have people stare at you. And people do stare at me. Like with the amount of loose skin I have and it's like I can't blame people for looking, you know, because it's out of the ordinary. People are gonna look. But it's not a great feeling. Luckily, you know, I did my research and I feel 100% confident in Katzen and like I've been following him on all the social media outlets, I've watched his YouTube videos and everything, so it's like that's definitely given me a lot more confidence in just the whole procedure as a whole because I know at least like I can have my general anxieties about surgery but I don't have the anxieties about who's doing my surgery or if it's going to turn out well or if I'm going to be in good hands or anything like that. How many weeks are we? We'll be three Friday, weeks on I'll Friday. Be three. My belly button. I was like, oh wow, there's already spots that are like no scabs. That always sticks a little bit up there. So let's, uh, yeah. All right, so what we do is. Hey! Yeah. It's a lot better today. Yeah, so that's what we wanted, right? Yeah, no. <laughs> I'm just surprised. A little swelling out in here. Betadine looks great. Um, that looks fine. He's yeah, worried about right swelling. there. Yeah, that's. It's all going to smooth out. I think okay. there's, there's a little stitch right underneath. There. All right. Okay. okay. Good technique. Good. Oh, that was That's nice good. of you to say. Ah, <laughs> oh, here we go. So this make sure it's not swelling or anything. It's swollen to me. <laughs> it is swollen. It is swollen. I'm just making sure it's not fluid. Mm. Big difference. And it's not. Okay, very good. Gotcha. Now let's do sort of the, uh, the spin, spin around. around. Yeah, looks good. This point looks fine. That looks fine. <laughs> yeah. okay. I mean, not that bad, but it's definitely. I know it's there, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah. Good. And then this guy. But yeah, this nipple looks way better. Yeah. And the body's kind of cool. Oh, if yeah. You, um, Study military warfare, that's what the body does, okay? It picks off the small battles first. Right. Wow, interesting. So it does the little wounds first. So really? it's healing up that, it's diverting all its energy to that mm -hmm. while everything else is at bay. So once this is healed, then the body will concentrate on this guy. Okay. okay? That's and fascinating. Then probably the back side and then probably this side. Because if you exert all your energies across all battlefronts, you're going to lose. Right. 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 Devote all your energy to here, win that war. Yeah. Go to the next one. Go to the next one. So. Zach is a prime example of patients who have lost weight and the skin really just doesn't bounce back. Now, Zach lost 233 pounds on his own. No gastric bypass, no lap band, just ate right and exercised all the time like a maniac and lost all this weight. So when that happens, when patients are morbidly obese, the skin is stretched out. And then when they lose the weight, all the elastic fibers in the skin try to recoil, try to contract, and try to bounce back. But the body's not perfect, it can't recoil all the way. And no matter how much exercise you do or no matter how much good food you eat, there's no way that skin's gonna bounce back. So after a 233 pound weight loss, there's no way the skin's gonna bounce back. So that's where plastic surgeons come in and we trim up that extra skin. We get rid of that loose hanging skin that just won't bounce back after that massive uh, weight loss. Life's pretty good, you know, I'm back basically feeling normal. I'm back in the gym, back lifting, back working. So I would say the top things after surgery that I've noticed is number one is definitely the way clothes fit. Clothes fit me 
so much better now to where it was like I used to wear like an extra large shirt um, and that was mainly just because it was more loose around my abdomen you know the extra larges would fit me pretty tight up here still but down in my abdomen I would want my shoe shirts to fit looser around my body because I had all that skin and all those folds and now it's like I just wear a large shirt which I wore some large shirts before but now I'm so much more comfortable in them and then um, the way pants fit is completely different too because I used to kind of have to play this game of like okay well am I gonna like try and tuck my skin down into these pants or am I gonna like hang my skin over these pants and now it's just pants just fit flat all the way around me it, it was surreal the first time I put a pair of pants on now like when I'm working out like I like jump roping and so one thing I've noticed when I'm jumping not having all that skin like jumping up and down with me has been a big difference to where it's it's a lot more comfortable for sure I don't know if this is too like r-rated but honestly just having sex is a lot better mainly just because when you're on top and gravity's pulling all your skin down it kind of gets in the way and things aren't as, as good but that's one another thing that i've noticed that's really like oh wow this is a big difference yeah luckily i stuck to exactly what dr katzen told me to do you know i was i rested for as long as he told me to rest i changed my bandages when he told me to change them i did everything that he told me to do so i don't really feel like there was much i would change um you know, I, before I got my surgery, I knew I was gonna be down for a long time, so I meal prepped a bunch of meals before my surgery, so that way I had enough food to kind of like keep me on track through that. And so, yeah, no, I feel like I was pretty prepared and there was not really much that was unexpected. I mean, obviously the pain was unexpected. I was not expecting to be in that much pain, but other than that, I feel like I was, I feel like I was in good hands in the sense that if you, you know, if I listened to what he was telling me to do, things went pretty smoothly. I, I was definitely very on edge before my surgery. And I, <laughs> I told a couple of friends of mine, like, I really felt like just getting in my car, driving away, getting a hotel room for the night, like the night before my surgery and just kind of like ghosting everybody. And then just showing up a few days later, like, yeah, hey guys, I'm back. Like, <laughs> my bad. Because it, it's, it's scary. You know what I mean? It is a big procedure and in my position, I've never really had any sort of major surgeries before, so I was really intimidated by it. But now, looking back on it, is I, I'm very glad that I did it. So I'm very glad. It yes. Yeah, I would do it again. If, if I had to, well, I mean, if I could go back in time, I wouldn't change my decision to do it.